Okay, here we are. This is a collaboration with Level Up Design. My plan was ultimately to take his map that he parallaxed and parallax that map. He has no idea, you know. <laughs> I sound like such a creep. And he sent me these. So I sent him these two files, right? This one and this one. And this is my house before. And he sent me this one, which looks like this, right? In my house, I did the downstairs. I redid this map so it works with my game and the way I wanted to do it. And I'll show you that real quick before we go any further. So this is the old one, right? And then this is it now. This is what it looks like in game. So I, you can't actually walk through the walls. I was holding control, but you can see it's actually a bit more zoomed in. So what we're going to do is we're not, we're going to go from this into this, this to this. I'm really starting to favor parallaxes now, especially since I'm doing a lot of stuff on mobile because I've actually found that a lot of times when you use the tiles and the game like scales resolution, which is common among like mobile devices, it actually will leave little gaps in uh, the tiles. So by parallaxing, I've kind of found a way to avoid that for my mobile games. A lot of people think that parallaxing doesn't work on mobile, and that's not true at all. It actually works really great on mobile, and in many ways, it'll be much ro more robust than using tiles. I think a lot of people think that tiles are smaller. If you have a game that's short, a lot of times, if you don't use the majority of the assets in that pack, it'll take more space in your game than an actual parallax map will, especially if you optimize the files. So something to think about, if you're gonna go into the mobile space, parallaxing works really great. Pre-rendering the levels works really great. But yeah, this, this map looks good, I love it. So let's do it on his other map. And we're gonna download the map that he gave me in PSD format. We take this image, and then what I gotta do is I gotta split it up into multiple images, and then I'm going to put those through an AI upscaler and I am going to put that in the game. This is basically the floor layer here and then the wall layer. So we can keep the walls. This can all still be on one layer. Then we have the grandma's room layer. Uh, all of this will still be pretty much behind the player. Again, all, everything will be behind the player except for this stuff at the bottom. So we're starting to get into a place where some of this stuff will actually be above the player like this stuff in the corner here. This table, I kind of want to cut it out as well. With my label layer, I'm just going to get a red square, something that looks really out of place. So this, right, and this. I need to go in front of the player and this. These shadows can go underneath the player. These dynamic shadows, these go above him. Her, her. What happens in real life is the brighter something gets, right, the more you see the color in it. You don't see white. White is what you get when you put like fog in front of something, right? And that's different than putting a light on something. When you put a light on something, it makes it more visible. It makes the colors more vibrant. So you want light to be on something that enriches the image and makes the color more vibrant. That works great with the lighten effect. So if you can see this here, this is the lighten effect here. And then there's the darken effect which has a similar effect to darkening. There is no darken effect in RPG Maker, but if you want to pre-render the shadows in your map, which I suggest you do with the darken effect for the ones that are behind the character, he has like a dynamic shadows layer, right? Oh, he uses pass-through. If you do pass-through, it separates the shadows, which honestly for this map wouldn't even really make a difference. So darken and pass-through, they are virtually the same. I also like experimenting with color burn. There's a lot of fun things you can do with color burn. And of course, it's really easy to try the different things, right? So we'll do, we'll leave it on pass through. I'm okay with that. I notice now that he has a separate, the light layer and the shadow are on separate layers. So we can separate them. For the light layer, we're gonna add a lighten effect, or you can do luminosity too if you wanna go really wild. So light goes above shadow. I'm not gonna use pass through. I'm gonna use normal for the light export because when we put it in the game, we're gonna use a lightening effect in the game. Okay, so uh, let's break it up. The, th the three things that I'm worried about uh, that won't naturally go on the top are these, because I want it to be possible to walk behind the table and behind these boxes and behind this. So it gets a little bit tricky with those. So 
what we'll do is we'll put them on both layers and then I'm gonna have to like cut them in half or something. I'm gonna call this middle and I gotta find these three objects. Table is mixed with multiple things. So these things will all go in front of the player. Now, okay, we have our layers broken up and I'm gonna actually put these into folders even more just so it's really clear what's going on here. So these two are already good. The light and the shadows are good. They're in the same layer, right? From there, okay, everything here and below, we're gonna put this all in one folder. This is gonna be a layer, then this is gonna be a layer. This is the stuff that can be in front of the player, which isn't that much. And then this is gonna be a layer. And then this is gonna be a layer. So the shadow layer, I actually have to add something to it. So we're gonna add another layer in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna black out all of the walls. So we're gonna copy them from another layer and then we're gonna pull them in. So I have one layer that has everything on it and I'm gonna pull that back into the shadows layer and I'm gonna cut out the things that aren't the walls. This will work as an individual layer right here. Uh, this will be like the top layer that goes on top of everything. And I'm gonna save for web just to make the process quicker. File, export, save for web. I'm gonna call this one 20, 24 map mid. Okay, so all of that is saved. We're gonna go to um, image AI upscaler. Um, we can do upscale media, uh, IMG upscaler. These are all decent ones. My favorite is big PNG of the of all of them. Big PNG is the one I almost always use. So let's grab those images we just made. You can see now that we got to this stage, there's definitely like some cleaning. Now it's time to put it in the game. Another thing I have to do before I go any further is I have to resize the canvas or image size. So uh, one thing that's tricky about this is this is like almost a 4K image now. Uh, so it's like really big. And what I need to do is I need to make it so it's three fourths the size that it is because I want it to be nine tiles to one tile. That way it'll scale really easily as far as with the tiles in RPG Maker, right? So we're gonna do percent and I'm gonna just do 75. And we're not gonna do nearest neighbor. We're gonna do automatic or by cubic sharper. So we're gonna, I'm gonna actually start putting this in the game now under layers. For those of you who are wondering, I am using the layers plugin. You can see all my other parallax maps here. Now, I'm gonna put this dude in the game, yo. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Now, be prepared. When I first put it in, the character is gonna be like a little tiny little baby. He's gonna be super duper small. So just be ready. Prepare yourself emotionally. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Extra ultra close up. And again, there are a couple things to tweak. You know, but still very cool. I'm gonna make it so my characters are bigger. I guess I'll do that next. So it's kind of, this would be like a fun thing you could do, right? It, it's like I went into like the giant's layer or something, you know? But you're starting to get the idea here of what this is going to look like. Very cool.